Macro photography is fun. If you feel like you live someplace boring or you can't even get out of the house for photography, a macro lens or macro setup can let you create some amazing pictures in otherwise seemingly boring locations. I've got a long video that details different macro options, and I'm going to link that at the end of this video and below. Today though, I want to talk about an affordable and unique macro lens that was released after I made that video. This is the Venus Optic 60mm f2.8 Ultra Macro, and I want to compare it to the similarly priced Canon 60mm and similar focal length EFS Macro, which is not Ultra. What makes the Venus an Ultra Macro? Well, it's actually capable of 2 to 1 macro. A true macro lens is able to achieve at least one-to-one -one macro, meaning you can capture an object at life size on the sensor. Two-to-one goes beyond that and you're actually now magnifying what you're capturing. I like to call this where things get gross. Very few lenses provide this level of magnification. Very few. The most popular, the Canon MPE 65, will actually go to 5x, but it costs over a thousand dollars. A much cheaper way to increase magnification is to use extension tubes. I do the cover of that in my other video or lens reversal rings. But for both of those, you need a decent lens, and if you don't have one, or you just want a simpler option that provides a nice build quality and very good sharpness, the Venus Optics will do a job and is very affordable at just $379. Let's take a moment and compare it against the Canon 60 millimeter. The Canon is a $469 EFS lens, meaning it only mounts on Canon's crop sensor bodies, it provides you effective focal length of about 96 millimeters, and capable of one-to-one -one magnification at the close focusing distance of 7.8 inches. It offers an ultrasonic autofocus and full-time manual focus system, so at any time you can grab the focus ring and adjust. It's a nice light lens that also works well for portraits, the Venus Optics is cheaper at $379 and available in full frame Canon, Nikon, Pentax, and even Sony A mount options. You can, of course, use it on a crop sensor camera where it gives you the same field of view as the Canon 60mm. Note that although this lens is full frame compatible, there is some notable vignetting at the longer distances on full frame bodies. Close focusing is very short, 2.4 inches, and the lens is fully manual manual focus and manual aperture. And again, you can use this for portraits as well, though that manual focus makes it a little slower to use. Before we talk image quality though, let's talk ease of use. That's a very important factor in macro photography, mostly for quick macro photos. This is where the Canon 60 millimeter excels. It's a very friendly lens. It's compact, it's lightweight, with fast autofocus and that full-time manual focus with a nice rubber ring that's easy to work with. For a quick shot, this is a great lens to use. But when you want the most macro of shots, autofocus isn't very helpful. And even with this lens, I often find myself manually setting the focus to one to one and physically moving the camera and watching magnified live view. Really serious macro photographers use rails to achieve very precise and careful movements of the camera rather than rely on the lens. So all that ease of use goes out the window. The Venus 60mm is not as friendly to use for quick shots as you're always relying on manual focus and you need to adjust your aperture manually. But again, when you want the most macro of shots, I end up using the same technique and I find myself carefully moving the whole system forward and backward to get focus. Now, it does become more difficult at that two to one option and rails would be useful or I wish the focus ring was more precise. It has nice heavy movements to it, but the distance is very short, meaning just a slight movement of the focus ring changes the focus more than I would like. At a two to one magnification, I want more precision in my movements. One other factor that makes this lens a bit tricky to use, and this happens with extension tubes and lens reversals as well, live view on Canon at least stops presenting an accurate simulation of what you're going to get. It's much darker. The exposure meter continues to be accurate, but if you're like me and you rely on live view and magnification, it can be tricky to see what you're doing without adjusting your settings. Again, if you're on a tripod or have the camera stabilized, this is easy. Adjust your settings to see what you're doing, get magnification, get focus, and then adjust to the proper exposure before taking the photo. But if you're trying to handhold, it's almost impossible at those close focusing distances, both to see properly using live view and to get focus. 
Now let's talk quality. The Venus offers a very sharp lens, and while you do get some vignetting on full frame at those longer focal distances, in the macro range, it provides very good sharpness, colors, and contrast at even the highest magnification. $379 for a sharp two times magnification lens is a good value as long as you're willing to work within those full manual settings. If you just want easy macro, don't mind cropping. The 60 millimeter EFS is fine and you can always give extension tubes or lens reversal rings a shot. They're cheaper, but they do introduce additional challenges on their own. I've got links to purchase everything I talked about in this video below along with additional sample photos. If you appreciated this video, take a moment to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for more gear reviews, how to, and our travels. You can also follow along on Instagram for more behind the scenes. And if you plan on purchasing any of the gear I just talked about, use my links below. Thanks for watching.